Huge thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace.com is the easiest way to start your own website. Thank you, Squarespace. This is the Weem Amp. We've been waiting for this for a while. It's amazing to think how far Weem has come from the little Weem minis, the little pucks, to a very well-designed streaming amplifier for $300 that looks like this. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Weem Amp. You ever seen a Mac Mini? Pretty much looks exactly like this. So Weem has done an excellent job of bringing to market a streaming amplifier that doesn't look like all the other Inside, under the hood, you have a Texas Instruments 3255 amp chipset for the Class D amplification. And to me, by ear, traditionally implemented, that is the best sounding affordable Class D amp chipset that one can get. And it's powerful. If you take a look at this thing, you see some ventilation around it here on the bottom. And that is one of the things that can choke out a 3255 amp chipset is cooling. It needs a lot of it, otherwise you're not gonna get the rate of power specifications. Now, I don't have a bench, I'm not gonna test this for how much power it actually puts out, but I will say I had it on a variety of speakers and guess what, it got as loud as I wanted it to get. So regardless of what type of cooling heatsink capacity the Weem amp has, it does a good enough job for me, personally. On the front, it's very simple here. You have a volume knob and then you have some functionality with a push button here. Turn it on, turn it off, change inputs. One LED over here that lets you know which input you're on changes colors. So, what's on the back? But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. It has never been easier to start your own website. And if you've ever considered starting your own website, well, then you should do it right now. Go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man, enter the code cheap audio man to get 10% off your first domain registration, your first website that you create. And it's super easy to create your own website. The only thing you have to do is go to squarespace.com, answer a few questions about you or your business. And Squarespace is gonna give you dozens of different templates to choose from. And then the only thing that you have to do is drag and drop your own photos, double click on the text box and fill in what you want the world to know about you or your website. There's some AI stuff going on too. Squarespace is doing all sorts of cool stuff to make your life easier when you start your own website. If you're intimidated, don't be. Squarespace has a wonderful help section where you can just ask a question and it's gonna give you articles and even videos on how to implement that into your brand new website. You wanna sell stuff? Squarespace has you covered. Wanna do an email campaign? Squarespace has you covered. Anything to do with the onlinery, with the web place, you can do a Squarespace. Do you collect old wadded up band-aids? Well, maybe you wanna reserve old wadded up band-aids enthusiast.com or .net. And with Squarespace, you can do that. You can search out all the domains. Old crumpled up band-aid enthusiast.com. Listen, there's an audience out there for everything. So start your website today. Go to squarespace.com slash cheap audio man and enter the code cheap audio man to get 10% off your first order. Thank you, Squarespace. on the back of the Weem amp. By the way, this is pretty heavy. Usually on a product like this, I would dangle something from my teeth and let it swing. I don't want to though, because I don't want to break my teeth. I would say if we're comparing it to the Fio R7, the Weem amp is heavier. On the back, pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple over here. Speaker binding posts, some actually pretty good speaker binding posts. They didn't cheap out on them, which is nice. Over here, subwoofer output. Up here, analog input. Over here, optical, is that an input? Input, that's right. 
I do have a bit of a gripe for Weem. We're gonna save that though till the, the final thoughts maybe. Right here, USB-A slot if you wanna stick a hard drive with all your music on it. Up here, hardwired ethernet over right here. Internal power supply, okay? So you just hook up a figure eight. And then right up here, the thing that all the kids are going crazy over these days, HDMI eARC. They sent me two of these, one of which I have on my back porch. You may have watched that video. I shot it all on my cell phone late at night. It's not a very good video, but it's the initial impressions of the Weem amp. On my back porch, running TV duties. A lot of football going on over there on the back porch. So let's talk about how you'd use this. If this were me, if I only had the Weem amp for my entertainment system, for my living room, for my den, for my cottage, for my hi-fi yurt, for my life raft with somehow solar power capabilities, this is how I would use it. Number one, TV is getting plugged in right here in the HDMI eARC, obviously. We need to talk about something. So the elephant in the room the 800 pound gorilla, the analogy of something being obvious to talk about, but nobody wants to talk about it, is the price. This is $300. There are not a lot of competition coming in anywhere close to $300, with the exception of the Arillic, I think H50, which is terrible. Nothing that looks like this, that's sleek, modern looking, decent looking, there's nothing out there. You have the SVS Sound Base Pro, which is excellent sounding. It's an awesome piece of equipment. And it has some features that I wish the Weem Amp had. I always want to call it the Weem Pro. Anyway, the Weem Amp. But at nearly triple the price of the Weem Amp, beggars can't really be choosers. The other major competition is the Blue Sound Edge, I believe it is. It's about $600. I just recently did a video on that. And it's a good device, very good device. But the Weem Amp does pretty much everything that that amp does at less than half the price. So the next thing you have to talk about is the software. The software on the SVS Soundbase Pro is based off of PlayFi. PlayFi has been around for a long time when it comes to streaming audio, but just because you were one of the first does not mean that you're one of the best. PlayFi, even though it's gotten better, still pales in comparison to the Blue Sound OS and to the Weem OS. The Weem, pretty much on par with Blue Sound. Blue Sound just did a new update though, so they do have a better UI more colorful, more pictures, maybe a little bit smarter than the Weem. But one thing I know about Weem from covering them for over maybe two years at this point is that they are fast and furious and not in the bad movie way when they go to space in some type of Nova, not a supernova, the car Nova. Anyway, it's not affiliated with the Fast and the Furious film franchise. I totally lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh yeah, that's right, their update schedule. Weem updates their software faster than I eat french fries out of the garbage when no one's looking. They're recently thrown away. I don't normally eat old french fries out of the garbage, but if it's been within the last 10 minutes, I'm not opposed to eating french fries out of the garbage. They update things a lot and quickly, and that's good. There's all sorts of functionality that Weem has come up with from BitPerfect, high-res streaming, 10-band equalizers, MQA stuff, if you care about MQA stuff, all sorts of stuff. The Weem is doing a wonderful job with their software. And frankly, I'm amazed because to me, a streamer is gonna be used more often if it's easy to use regardless of whether or not it sounds better than another streamer. Sorry, I went off on a bit of a tangent there. So how I would use this is obviously eARC from the television. I would take optical from maybe a CD player and using it as a transport. And then I would use the analog input for a phono stage so I could connect a turntable to it and then the Weem amp becomes an integrated amplifier because you have an analog input, because you have a digital input, and because you have eARC. So you can switch between the streamer, Bluetooth, AirPlay, Chromecast, all that. 
then to your TV, then to your CD, transports, and then to your phono preamp and your turntable. So a lot of functionality. How does it sound? Well, I compared it directly to a Fozzy Audio V3 with the 48 volt 5 amp power supply connected to the SMSL SU1 DAC connected to, well, a Weem Pro. I have most of the functionality of the Weem amp. Actually, I have a little bit more. But the big thing that I don't have is the HDMI eARC connection. Now, one can get that with a little SMSL box, but you're limited to the DAC that's internal to that little SMSL box. So you wouldn't be able to use it with the SU-1 as far as a DAC goes. Now that may not matter to you, but what will matter to you is that it's $100. Just the SU-1, just the Weem Pro, and just the Fozzy Audio V3 with a 48 volt, five amp power supply comes to $352. So $52 more than the Weem amp. Does the little stack beat the Weem amp from a sonic characteristic? Yes actually quite a bit. And it has mostly to do with dynamics. It has mostly to do with clarity. And I was using the same speakers, the Emotiva B2 Plus. Four ohm speakers, not super easy to drive. I was able to max out the Weem amp full tilt without distortion, peaking into the 90s, like 91, 92. With the Fozzy Audio V3, the SU-1, and the Weem Pro stack, I was easily able to get to 95 peaks. And I could have gone further, but I didn't want to mess up the speakers or anything. That stack, better dynamics, which means how do things sound when they go soft to loud, soft to loud, much better bass control on the V3, and it makes sense. There should be, on paper, more watts to play with, and there was a lot more power to play with, because getting something from like 90 or 80 dB up to 90 dB takes a lot more power. I don't know what the math is, but sometimes it's double the power just to get it like three to six dB louder. For me, the little V3 stack, I think did much, much better sonically. And I think even to a layman, they would be able to hear the difference. Does that matter? It shouldn't, not really. One can manipulate the EQ on the Weem amp to get it to sound better, but you can't really EQ in dynamics. You can put a little bit of a bass boost in there and you're gonna get a little bit of a oomph, but you're not playing around with nearly as much power as you are with V3. So that could bring in quite a bit of distortion if you're trying to push this thing. And I think most people that are buying this product are not gonna be trying to really push it all the way to 90 dB. The Weem amp is an absolute delight. It has a Sabre deck inside. I didn't really find a lot of information on what exact Saber DAC it has, but it sounds good. Comparing it to the V3, the SU-1, and another Weem Pro isn't really a fair fight. What we're really doing is a comparing an all-in-one unit to a separates unit. Almost in every case, a separates system is always going to outperform an integrated or an all-in-one system. The deck was somewhat stacked against the Weem amp from the beginning on this comparison. The problem is I did have the Blue Sound Edge in here for a while, but that has since moved back on to Lenbrook. So I don't have it anymore to do that comparison. That would have been a better comparison, I think. The good news is the Weem amp with the same 3255 in it as is in the V3, did not sound harsh, did not sound digital. There was no artifacting going on. Seemed a little bit more relaxed in its presentation. And I would rather have relaxed in a presentation than ultra clean, ultra analytical like a lot of other Class D amps have. The problem is the V3 is really almost a flawless Class D amplifier when it comes to clarity. But it did have more dynamics than the Weem amp. So what are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. Well, this is exactly what I thought it was gonna be, and this is a market disrupting piece of high buy equipment. Taking on, and I think in some senses, beating Blue Sound, because it comes in at half the price. 
Now you could say, well, that's easy because Weem is a direct to customer company. They don't have any of the dealer markup that something like Blue Sound or Cambridge Audio or any of the traditionally distributed hi-fi brands out there. However, guess who's selling the Weem amp now? Crutchfield, that's right. There is traditional distribution for the Weem amp. I said this in a previous video, but that gives Weem a lot of credibility when it's being carried by a company like Crutchfield who has been around for decades, has great customer service, and is not gonna put something on their website that's really not very good. So now we have a streaming amplifier with HDMI eARC, with a subwoofer out, with bass management. As soon as you turn on, toggle on the subwoofer output, you have a slider that you can control the high pass filter. And that goes all the way from, I think, 30 up to 250. And it does work. I did test it. You can suck the bass right out of the speakers. That's coming in at $300. But it's not perfect. Or I can't say it's not perfect. I think it is perfect at $300. Because the Aurelic H50 is $400 it's not very good. What I think we're missing on here is preamp outputs. What I think we're missing on here is an optical or coaxial output because what one could do if they had those two outputs, which guess what? The SVS Soundbase Pro has preamp outputs. If we had that in this unit, what somebody could do if they're starting out their hi-fi journey is buy the Weem amp because then you have digital streaming, you have Bluetooth, you have Chromecast, you have AirPlay, you have two-way Bluetooth, you have access to Tidal, Rune, Spotify, Kobuz, pretty much everything. One of the best, if not the best, streaming platforms to work on. So you have all of that. So what I really wish is they had preamp outputs, digital outputs, so that when somebody outgrows this, or they save up more money and they want a better amplifier or anything else, a new DAC, they would still be able to use this device, pipe it into their better DAC, pipe it into their better amplifier, pipe it into their better preamp, and still have a streamer. And that streamer, even at $300, is still worth the price of admission. It's like you're getting a free amplifier in here. But since it doesn't have preamp output, since it doesn't have a digital output, you are only able to use this with speakers. Now, they shouldn't be blamed for this because guess who else does that? Blue Sound. So I get it. I bet you the next generation of Weem amps has a digital output or preamp outputs. You can tune this thing exactly how you want it to be depending upon what speakers you have. Does it have enough juice to drive every speaker? Probably not. Now, they're not going crazy on their stated output power. 60 watts into 8, 100 watts into 4, I believe. Well, that's not nearly the capabilities of the 3255 amp chip that's inside. It's a near-perfect product. The only thing that I have to gripe about this product is the outputs. There are none. It's very difficult for Blue Sound to compete with this on their lower tier stuff. I get it. Blue Sound OS is going to be included in the higher tier NAD products, even Rotel products. All the companies within the Lindbergh family are going to be able to utilize and benefit from the Blue Sound OS. But on the affordable side, Weem owns it and will continue to own it for as long as they want to. Think about this. If we are getting a streaming amplifier for $300 that's this good, what can they do for $600? Weem, if you're watching this, please put a touch screen, some album art. You don't even have, it doesn't even need to be an amplifier, just a preamp. Album art, $600. I'll buy three of them. Another mic drop moment for Weem. And I cannot wait to see what they come out with next because it's going to be pretty awesome, I imagine. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen or binge watch through your new Weem amp because it has an eARC connection for $299 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.